I don't know about you, but I think this has been the best family conference. Um, I want to thank Mark and Aaron and the family committee for an amazing, amazing job. I think my favorite night, though, was last night. <laughs> I haven't laughed so hard and cried it, so much, <laughs> and, and so often it was really, it was really sweet. Um, I don't need to go into who the Joshua Freese Foundation is. I think you pretty are. Uh, you're all aware of what we've been involved with and trying to communicate to the families what has been coming down the pike. And um, eight years ago, I really saw the need to start gathering our families globally and I really started to try to focus more on capturing those families that would call me. I can't say that I have captured every mother that has called me from a NIC unit that's sitting there um, and has had the death sentence, you know, of um, her child will probably not make past the age of two. Um, there's many of those mothers that I speak to that I never hear again. And so, we all know the exciting news that's been coming down the pike and the promising possibilities for therapies in our community, and I really have felt the urgency, how do I update, I have close to 300 families on my database, and it's not been a 16-year accumulation, it's probably just been more of the last eight. Um, Paul, why don't you come up if I forget something? Um, but so I have uh, been speaking to Barry Burns, um, Alan, Mike, I, wearing them out. Like, how do I simplify that process that gives the investigators the ability to connect directly to the families and the patients? To simplify the process. I think one of the things that I also struggled with was. You know, I, I know what it takes to take care of these critically ill children, and I did not want to bog you down with the time of spending endless time collecting data information. So, um, in conversation with Barry Burns and his group uh, has gone through hurdles with um, their registry. You've collected it, what, twice, Barry, and going back through the years. There are steps ahead of us um, in our community, and so I really leaned very heavily on Barry and educating me in that piece. What will it take? How do we connect these investigators to the patients and simplifying that process? And six months ago, I had a dream. I woke up and I, I saw this map. It was a global map, and, I, and it was my family's that I had currently had captured um, on JFF. But I also knew that there were so many more families that we are missing. Um, there's a lot of us that are on Facebook, but I have to tell you, there's so many of my families that are not on Facebook. Um, I have some that don't even have emails. Um, I have, um, as you will see in just a couple minutes here, families, you know, almost touching every continent. And so uh, Barry got me on a conversation with his ID department, and he said, let's try to figure this out. And so, uh, what I initially saw was families have the ability to log on on the back end in a secured server situation to update their contact information. They had the ability to go on and ask, uh, answer, what was your genetic confirmation registering your child? Is your child affected? Is your child alive? Is your child deceased? Um, would you be involved for clinical trials? Would you, you know, would you? allow us to contact you for clinical trials. And so um, I got the email linked Tuesday, just this Tuesday, and when I opened it, it was the exact picture I had seen in a dream of our, our global map. But basically, um, the name of this registry, we decided was a family registry for central nuclear myotubular myopathies. It's a, basic, a very basic patient registry connecting investigators to patients, as I had said. Um, this is being stored uh, on a design platform in a secure institutional server, and it is in encrypted upon submission. Um, access to the data, I know you all are thinking that, it's a very valid question. Um, if you log on to uh, the Joshua Freese Foundation, we do have a scientific advisory board that was put in, in about a year ago. Um, 
this um, this will go before the um, advisory board to uh, determine companies or institutions in the process of clinical trials and, and who will have access to that. Um, Mark, how do, I, how do I go to that? I'm not as savvy as everybody in this room with presentations. Down. So this, this picture portrays our, our, um, our family uh, reach compiled over the last few years. Um, I struggled with the sense of, okay, so are we truly going to get a clear picture? We have the, um, we have the other registries that are running, currently running, but what is going to give our investigators the ability to look at my registry, their enrollment, and what is what is gonna give them the ability to give a clear picture? And I felt like this was the simplest way uh, to achieve that. Um, this right here currently shows uh, the families of, uh, that I'm in reach with, with the foundation, through the foundation. And um, I think this is just really going to be key for uh, as we start to prepare for clinical trial readiness as well. I think I have about 70% of you that have already logged on this weekend and filled it out. It took less than five minutes uh, to um, fill out this questionnaire. Um, basically, uh, for those of you that have not had the ability to do that, this is the questionnaire. This is what it looks like. It's pretty clear. Um, you will have the ability to uh, contact us at any point in time. Um, the first part, the first top is your contact info. Second part is about the affected individual. Um, even if uh, we're carrier females, I know there's so many mothers that um, we communicate, all of us with, that are affected by this, and we really felt like that we needed to start capturing that information for, ten, for, for potential possibilities down the line. Um, genetic confirmation is pretty clear through um, was your confirmation through muscle biopsy through a DNA certified lab this piece right here is what's going to give a lot of clarity to the investigators so who have you registered with Alan Beggs, Jim Dowling, CMDIR, Maya Tubular Trust and the Joshua Frey's Foundation um, I really felt like this was just a uh, really very important for our investigators to get a clear picture. And then of course here at the bottom, um, it gives you the ability to, uh, would you like to be uh, contacted for clinical trials? Um, do you wish to be placed on the de-identified map? So the map that I showed you was the current zip codes um, and regions through the world of um, the foundation's database. Eventually, once I, I get a real good chunk of those families that have updated their information, I will launch that live map. Um, and it will sit on the, uh, the foundation's website. Um, I, think it's, I think it's gonna be, I'm hoping that it goes viral as you share it to others. I think it'll be um, really something very quick and easy for our families to um, update their contact info. Once a year you will be contacted to, uh, to update it to clarify if there's been any changes. Um, but uh, have I forgotten anything? He's been listening to me talk about this for months, so. Um. I've learned after 20 years, and most of you men can probably relate to this, that when you're told where to stand and when to open your mouth, it really helps. So. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, when I listen, it, uh, it, it usually is right, a very high percentage of the time. Uh, one thing that's really exciting, you know, Things are taking place. There's been a lot of information dumped out this weekend, and it's, it's some incredible information that Allison and I and some other families here have been privileged to um, be a part of and hear about, you know, over the past years. And um, you know, when we when we talk about our our families, we're talking about we're part of you. You are part of us. We're all affected by these by this CNM umbrella. So um, this is your registry. It's a family registry. And it's going to help. Um, you know, we endorse everything that's going on in this community that is leading this this community to clinical trials. The CMDIR, the Natural History Study, the, the University, of, University of Florida, the Myotubular Trust. 
we are we are close. We're closer than we've ever been. Sometimes Alice and I get a little exuberant and, or over exuberant, but it's um you know I, I kind of uh, these scientists have been working in Abush Bella. We really consider you know the pioneer. We we had the great fortune of meeting her last year in New Orleans. And the first thing she said to us is that I'm sorry we couldn't go faster. Now, <clears throat> the bottom line is we're closer than we've ever been. We're making great strides. But each one of you don't stop living your lives. Don't stop making those crazy trips from Huntington Beach, California <laughs> when, you're, when your family thought you were nuts to do it. Don't stop walking your, your son up to the base of the waterfall and letting the water spray off his face. Don't stop, although I would argue with maybe uh, the Whiston family, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about being a, a White Sox fan, but if Will <laughs> decides he wants to be great. I think uh, Will Ward really has it right being a Red Sox fan. <laughs> so, so real briefly, so, so we're close than we've ever been. We feel optimistic. You know, we, we need your participation. Obviously, there's going to be some overlap in some of these registries, but the more information we get, the better off we're going to be. Uh, Barb had mentioned you need so much information. You need a sea of information before you get to the FDA and tell them we're ready to go. So. Get on board with all of these initiatives. And now we have our own Joan of Arc and William Wallace. I don't know if you want to be Mother Teresa. <laughs> you know, but we've got, we've got two, two viable companies that have committed to bringing, uh, um, you know, making it viable, bringing a therapy to these kids. And our, and our Allison, our, our heart is that this works, but don't stop living your lives and get excited about what's happening and, and, and start dripping on other people, other families that haven't engaged. And we understand why people don't engage. It's survival. You all are focused on survival. And keep focusing on smiling and laughing. We've got comedians that, that want to be writers and singers that want to be CPAs, and uh, just it's, it's been a, it's been an awesome, awesome weekend. Alice and I are just so privileged to be here. Mark and Aaron, Marie, the, the planning committee. My goodness, what an amazing weekend! So thank you so much. And uh, and and you know, we we have the privilege of knowing a lot of these scientists for many years. They want to get to know each and every one of you. So when you have a Jim Dowling saying, hey, give us a call, or Bob saying, hey, give us a call, Casey, Childers, you know, right on down the line. Anna, we, we need, uh, is there an extension to, to France? <laughs> yeah, long distance. But you've got, you've got CEOs of companies that want to get to know you in, in, the, in the family, as a family. So we're excited to be, still be a part of this family. We always will be. You're not going to get rid of us. And, uh, but, but bless all of you. Thank you.